Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell, and I'm going to touch upon some kind of controversial subjects here, but I'm going to begin with my own little story. You know, I was a kid who didn't have tons of fights. I didn't have a lot of fights. I had some, but I didn't have a lot of fights. I was pretty lucky in the fact that if there was someone who possibly could beat me up, and I was a small kid until I was probably 13 and a half, I always had someone who would step in front and dare someone to start something with me. I, you know, I used to know how to make friends. I don't know how to do it now, but I used to know how to make friends. And so I had that. And then when I got bigger, because I actually grew 10 inches in one year when I was 13 years old, I was the guy who protected other people. I would stand in front and make sure, you know, that someone was not going to uh, have to deal with someone who was bigger than them. And if they were still bigger than me, my dad, the master sergeant always said, you know what, if someone is bigger than you, you hit them where it hurts the most and you pick up a stick or you pick up a and you just do whatever you have to to hurt these people. Now, this was what my dad said. Luckily, it never came to that. But I always had, you know, my way of fighting, which was when I never threw a punch first in my entire life. I've never thrown a first punch at anyone. I would egg someone on. And when they threw the first punch, they always threw at the head. They always missed because you telegraph it so much. I always hit people in the stomach. They would double over. I would smack them on the back of the head. They would fall down, and then I would walk away. They Sometimes they didn't like that, and they would run after you. You would hear them, and you could see them out of the corner of your eye. You'd sidestep. They'd do whatever. You'd knock them down again, and you keep walking. And then it didn't matter what they said because you've already won. That's just how I fought. So I never really had to get into a whole lot of these things. Second part is that growing up as a kid, I was never hit by my parents. Never. Um, I said in a different video that maybe when I was, you know, one or two years old, I might have got the smack on the hand, but I don't remember it. So in my memorable life, I've never been hit by my parents. So where am I going with this? Well, we've had some things that have happened in sports over the last few weeks or months, if you will. And it's bringing some things to light in my mind. And it shows how things have changed in a way and haven't changed in a way. And I'm in this weird conflict because on some levels, I'm not sure how I would react to things or would have reacted to things. And I know how things used to be reacted to in the past and how they're, you know, perceived now. And I now understand what older people used to say when I was in my teens and 20s about how the world is changing and it's sometimes hard to keep up with because I'm in that spot right now and I'm sharing this. For instance, we had the thing with Adrian Peterson, who plays for the Minnesota Vikings, who I hate just because they're the Vikings, but he basically disciplined his four-year-old by going outside and grabbing a switch and smacking his child in the legs. Now, the thing is, this is old behavior. Even though my parents never hit me, I knew tons of kids whose parents used to hit them. Most of the time with things much worse than that. Sometimes it was a belt. Sometimes it was a hanger. There's a lot of people who talked about being hit with extension cords. Now, that stuff is horrible. It, it, I mean, just, just no real excuse for that type of thing. But is spanking really so bad? You know what? I don't know because I never experienced it. But there's a lot of people who are adults now whose parents did spank them or whip them and did whatever. And the overwhelming majority of them said, you know what? I deserved it. There are kids today who get these punishments where, you know, their parents upload the videos to YouTube. And the first thing the child says is, I wish my parents had just whipped me and gotten over it. And, you know, it would have been over and done with. Um, in the old days, one of the things that a father would do is he would give his child, his son, a bad haircut. I don't think they ever did that to the girls, but they would give sons bad haircuts and make them go to school for a while with a bad haircut. It kind of an embarrassment kind of thing. Now that's frowned upon and that's considered child abuse also. We, you know, we're in this world now where people look at these things as child abuse and you shouldn't shame your child and you shouldn't hit your child. And most people aren't even disciplining their children. And so we get these kids who think they can get away with anything, and most of them do until they run into the wrong person. I'm sorry, who came up with affluenza? It wasn't any of us. It was some rich kid who got it. And then his father did something later on, probably thinking he could get away with it. Right now, I don't know if he has or not. Then we have this thing with this guy, Ray Rice, who I mentioned in my previous video, 
with him and his wife. And I haven't seen the video, but my goodness, I mean, you can't go almost anywhere without reading about what happened. Here's the thing. Did he overreact? I'll say yes. And the only reason I hesitate a little bit is because in my 20s and 30s, although, like I said, it was nothing that ever came up in my life, I used to think one of the worst things in the world was getting spit on by anybody. I could have cared less. And I've never, obviously, like I said, I never had all that many fights, but I've never hit a woman. Never. Okay, I can rephrase that. Not intentionally. Uh, because I've mentioned that I had sleep apnea and I used to have problems sleeping. I actually still have problems sleeping. Every once in a while, while sleeping, I would thrash whatever and I used to hit my wife. And, and we found a way to resolve that, but I didn't know I was doing it. So that doesn't count. But, you know, you, you sit there and you say, well, okay, so if you're much bigger than your wife or you're much stronger than your wife or any woman in general and she starts hitting you, well, hitting her or punching her, no, you, you just can't do it. You can grab. Can you push? I think you can push. You can walk away. You know, there are those times where that's just a smarter thing to do. Even if they start throwing things at you. Now, if they got a knife or a gun, <laughs> you know what? All bets are off. But, you know, some of these other things. But what if you have a wife who's your size or even bigger and she starts hitting you? Well, you know, everyone will say, well, just walk away. Sometimes you just can't walk away, especially if they just keep hitting and hitting and hitting. You just might not have a choice. Now, are you okay to hit someone in that regard? Well, I'm of the opinion, yes, but will society agree with that? I just don't know. In this particular instance, they were arguing before they got to the elevators. Supposedly, she spit on him and he lost his mind. And I sat there thinking, well, you know what? In my 20s, probably maybe not my 30s, but in my 20s, definitely in my teens, I might have gone off because to me, that was just the nastiest thing. I have this thing sometimes where I don't want people touching me and I get this thing about germs. I want to go wash and whatever. So you start thinking about stuff like that. And I'm thinking it's a reaction thing. Um, now, what also was in some of these news stories is that she'd been hitting him. Now, she's smaller than this guy. You know, she's a football player. He's obviously muscular. I mean, I never really paid any real attention to how <laughs> muscular these guys were until a few years ago when Terrell Owens, who was basically castigated out of sports at that time, was out there trying to work out. And the guy had his shirt off. I'm like, my God, these guys really are built. You know, who never ever knew that? I certainly didn't. But, you know, you, you see these guys and you realize these are primo athletes. But you also have to sometimes realize these are these are kids. What's he, 23, 24 years old? What he did was horrible, but it makes me wonder. 30 years ago, if that had happened to me, would I have done the same thing? Now, truthfully, if there had been an argument earlier, I would have just gone. So it would have never escalated at that point. But what if it was just something that came up really quick and someone did that? What if you're walking down the street and a stranger spit on you? What would you do? Would you just stand there and say, oh, goodness, someone spit on me? Or would you maybe think to smack them? You never know until you're in that situation. So, I, I'm, you know, I've got trouble by this. Now, the thing is, of course, he then lied about different stuff from what I understand. Then he had to come clean. And then there's the video that came out that I haven't seen. But, you know, it's, it's troublesome because it really puts me in a spot being older where I'm sitting there saying, you know, I always said that if some woman smacked you in the face, you should have the right to hit her back. And now I, I can't necessarily say that. Society certainly doesn't agree with that. But can we really be pacifists? I, I just don't know. I'm kind of struck by this. Look at this group, ISIS. Now, I mean, these guys are way over the top, but there are still people in this country who say, well, we shouldn't bomb them. We should be trying to talk to them. Yeah. How how well is that working? <laughs> how well did it work to talk to Al Qaeda or the Taliban? Yeah, talking didn't work. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes a fight is necessary. Sometimes it's necessary to defend yourself physically. That's just how it is. Someone breaks in your house and they've got a gun or they got a, a, a knife or they've got a, a metal pipe. You better defend yourself in some fashion. Otherwise, you could get maimed pretty badly or you could get killed. So, you know, but they call that self-defense. But if someone breaks in your house and you beat them and then it turns out they don't have a gun or a knife or a pipe, you go to jail. I I, I don't know. This, 
It's so contradictory unless you live in Florida or Texas. You know, just got to tell it like it is. Uh, but we're in a strange area right now, and I'm conflicted, and I'm not really sure how to say this uh, so that it doesn't sound bad. But I am going to say this, hitting probably anyone without real provocation is a bad thing. Now, what real provocation is differs from person to person. But, you know, there does have to be restraint sometimes. Um, it's kind of like I talk about trolls all the time. And I say, you know, there's no need to say some of the things that these people say. Well, you know what? Those folks need some verbal restraint. And if you egg someone on, you know, Stephen A. Smith got into trouble because he said, you know, uh, women shouldn't be egging people on. You know, they should do anything they can not to provoke a situation. He said it wrong, but he was right because that should apply to anybody. You know, when I was a kid, egging someone on so they would throw the first punch so then I could do what I needed to do, I, that was intentional, but it was also planned. I knew what I was doing, but it was, it was the wrong thing to do. Nowadays, you start to think, um, as you have so many more anonymous people, or, or you have people who know how to track people down and look, find their address, and they put it all on the internet and all this other kind of stuff. And these are people who think they're well hidden. No one's well hidden online. But, you know, you see all this stuff all the time. And then people show up at their houses and do all these things, and people go into hiding and seclusion or whatever. Um, you know, we're in this trigger happy world. It's easy to get a gun. I'm gonna not I'm not gonna say I could get a gun anywhere easily, but I will say that probably in my 30s, it wouldn't have been hard. I knew a lot of people who knew people who knew people. These days I don't know anybody, so it'd probably be harder. But you know, there's this thing where we need restraint, but there are these things where we also have to recognize that every once in a while someone's borders are crossed and how they react in those moments don't necessarily indicate who they are. We have people who have this road rage when sometimes they just had this really bad day at work and they just can't control themselves and they do something stupid. And you know what? You're going to go to jail for that. And you think about these kinds of things and you say, you know what? They needed to show a little bit more restraint. They needed to calm themselves before they did that. You need to calm yourself, you know, before you, you decided to get in your car and do that or before you decided to drink yourself into oblivion or you decided to shoot yourself up with something. You know, we need more of that. And I acknowledge that sometimes it may be hard not to react to things. But, you know, it's something we all have to do. But I can't be the only one conflicted by this. So that's why I'm doing this video. I'm putting it out here. I'm asking y'all, how do you react to things like this? What do you think about people who do react to things like this in the heat of the moment? Do you think that's really indicative of who they are all the time? Or is it sometimes just one of those types of things that happens? And how forgiving should we be at times? You know, this guy here, uh, like I said, I didn't see the video. I don't know what the punch looked like, but the thing is, he obviously knocked her out. Totally in the wrong. Didn't have to do it. That's my thought. But at his age, what I have done that, I don't know. I really don't. And I'm kind of ashamed to say that, but I really don't. My mentality was different then than it is now. So I'm putting it out there. Anyway, I'm Mitch Mitchell. Y'all take care. Let me know what you think.